I am looking for a dangerous church. I'll, I'll say again, I'm looking for a dangerous church. Today we rightfully honored first responders, people who run towards danger when other people are running from it. Oftentimes, first responders are thrust into unexpected situations, emergency calls. And when you have an emergency, what number do you call? <laughs> Pastor DeMarcus, stand up. When was, what day was your daughter born? September 11th, 2011, at 9-11 p.m. Your daughter's name is what? Trinity. And so God marked an emergency situation with the Trinity, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And your daughter is anointed to, to speak to the emergency that is in the earth. For we consider the sufferings of this present age are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us for the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly awaits the revealing of the sons of God because there's an emergency in the earth and the earth is groaning with birth pains until now. The earth is screaming 9-11, waiting for the church to rise up. But we are too busy seeking entertainment. Your daughter was born on September 11th of 2011 at 9, 11 p.m. Romans 5, verse 6 says, For when we were still without strength, in due time Christ died for people who go to church. If you don't have a Bible, you should get one. And if you have one, you should open it. Romans chapter 5 and 6, I, I think this is what it says. For when we were still without strength in due time, Christ died for tithers. In due time, Christ died for the people who knew all the words to the song. For when we were still without strength in due time, Christ died for the people that are looking at their watches, hoping to get out of here before the game starts. For when we were still without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. So he didn't die for perfect people. Perfect people. He didn't die for people who think they're better than other people. Jesus died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet perhaps for a good man someone would even dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love toward us in that why we were still sinners. Somebody, stay, somebody say still sinners. still sinners. Say it like you know it was talking about us. Still sinner. Christ died for us. It makes no sense to run into an impossible situation knowing it would cost you your life. Jesus went into the Garden of Gethsemane on a Thursday night knowing that on Friday they were going to take his life, not because of what he did, but because of what I did and what you did. And yet here we are coming in when we want, ever so casual. And as urgent as the moment is in the earth, we still have plenty of seats left, but every stadium is filled. And they were filled yesterday too. And I'm looking for a dangerous church, a church that doesn't feel like playing contemporary church games anymore, but will go after souls as if they were burning in flames and you, with the knowledge of Jesus Christ, were their only hope. Today is all in part six, dangerous church, dangerous church. Let me pray. Lord, speak. And speak with power in Jesus' name. Amen. 
I'm grateful for our police officers, our sheriff's deputies, all of our armed forces, men and women, National Guard, EMTs, firefighters. That is not an easy job. And we don't often understand the weight of what it takes to do a job like that. And I ask us to honor them today because it was in line with the word that God gave me. Everybody say, dangerous church. In September of 2000, I was given a position as a youth minister at a church in New Jersey. All right. <laughs> I packed my 1989 Nissan Pathfinder two-door stick shift with the dent on the left rear wheel well. I liked that truck because um, it, like I, was a Pathfinder. I was trying to find my way. It was dented up, and I liked that dent. I never got it fixed because I liked the dent, and I knew wherever my car was, that was my car. That's my dent. And a lot of times we want to push the dents out and act like we're all good, but every now and then, it's your dents that mark you as different. It's the things you've been through that give you a unique testimony that nobody else can have. I remember packing that Nissan Pathfinder and driving the 10 hours to New Jersey, and I would call my mama on the way, and I finally got there to sleep on my friend's couch. He and his wife let me sleep on their couch in New Jersey. Mike uh, and Crystal Penix, they're from Pittsburgh. They're Steelers fans, so we're praying for them. Um, I remember our first weekend serving. Our youth ministry was called Jam. It ain't too hard for me to jam. Uh, it ain't too hard for me to jam. Jesus and me. And we would meet in the Community Development Corporation. The church had a building they owned. We would meet in the basement. About 50 teenagers down in the basement. They had graffiti on the wall. They was in there pop locking. They were break dancing and getting saved at the same time. And the adults, because it's an upper middle class church, it was like, oh, that's sweet. That's cute. Until some of their kids started coming home speaking in a different language. And then I got called into the office and they were like, what are you doing down there? Because they think this is a cult. And why do you, what is this speaking in tongues? I said, hey, read the Bible. And I made it clear that I understand that everyone won't have the same gifts, even though Paul said equally desire the greater gifts. But I do believe that the Bible makes it clear that the Holy Spirit gives gifts to whom he will. Each one of us has different gifts for the working together of the body of Christ. So just because I have certain gifts doesn't make me more spiritual than you. I have a unique gift set because I'm called to do something different than you. But it doesn't mean I'm better than you. And so some people might have the gift of tongues. Some may have the interpretation. I'm not the one who distributes them, and I'm not the one saying that it is a prerequisite for salvation. So while you're worrying about my theology, you should check the fruit. And so I served there, and then a little over a year later, I was working at another church there in New Jersey uh, on September 11th of 2001 in New Jersey not far from the bridge that would take me into New York City. I remember waking up Tuesday, September 11th, and my mother called me, and she said, are you watching the news? And I said, no. She said, our country is under attack. And I don't know if anybody here remembers that day where you were. Does anybody remember where they were? I was living in Plainsboro, New Jersey. I started making phone calls to the people on our church staff. Is everybody all right? Everybody was saying yes. I got in my blue Ford Taurus because the transmission on my Pathfinder broke down. It got me to where I needed to get to, and then it was time for the blue, the blue Ford Taurus. And nothing ensures your virginity like a blue Ford Taurus. There's no woman is hollering at a, with cloth seats. Every time I drive, they're like, this a rental? Don't judge me. This was 2001, and I remember getting on the New Jersey Turnpike, strangest thing. They had shut the highway down, but I was one of the first cars that they allowed back on the Turnpike, 10 lanes of traffic, and I was probably one of 10 cars on it, driving straight up the Turnpike, heading north, got off at around exit 15, somewhere near Jersey City, and looked over to see where the towers used to be. 
and I remember the feeling of dread and fear that came over me. I rushed back to the church, and we had service that night, and we stayed there. People coming off the train, coming in with the dust from the towers, still on their clothes, weeping at the altar, with tears mixed with, with dust at the altar, believing that their family members got out, not knowing what was coming next. I remember the fear that gripped our region because you could see the smoke. Later that night, Pastor Robert, I would watch the news and I would see pictures of firefighters as they were looking at the towers before they walked in. What kind of bravery and courage did it take to have on 50 pounds of gear looking at certain death, knowing that you signed up to save lives? Now you can't take an elevator. You got to climb to fight for people you don't even know. And they they bravely climbed into their own coffin so somebody else knew that hope was on the way. And that's why we honor our first responders because they do what other people won't do. And they do it for people who may never know what it costs. They went into the buildings and they went fighting for people's lives who were screaming for help. You may say, Pastor John, this is a very depressing sermon. No, it isn't. Stay with me for a few minutes. I'm getting ready to get to somewhere that you need to be because on that day, first responders, 412 of the over 2,900 people that died at the Twin Towers, 412 were first responders. Of them, 343 were firefighters. The reason why that's important is because you and I are called to be firefighters. You can sit there and stare at me if you want. If you wanna play church, get your things and go down the street somewhere else because today I'm laying down the gauntlet because we will be a dangerous church that runs into the flames for people that are dying, for people that are on fire, for people that have no hope. You can have a needle in your arm and weed in your pocket, but you have a home here. You could have a gun on your hip and bullets in your back pocket, but you have a home here. You can have HIV in your blood and no hope in your heart but you have a home here. You can be trying to figure out who you are, what you are, who you love, or how many you love, but you have a home here. We will be a dangerous church. We will fight for souls because Jesus fought for us when we weren't even looking for him. And if you know that I'm talking about you, then you ought to give God a thank you. Don't wait on the music. You're going to sit there and not clap like you saved yourself, like you so big and bad that your own faith saved you. You had no hope just like me. You were lost just like me, but the blood of Jesus saved you. Who would run into a burning building to save complete stranger? Somebody say dangerous church. See, we're called to snatch souls from the flames. And the reason why I have an urgency now that I haven't had is because over the last two weeks, I've buried one of my friends. He was 41. Yesterday, I buried another friend. She was 46, had to hug her husband and two kids. And it, we've known each other since six years old. I've known her 40 years. Life is this short. Walk around, and, and in one moment, you go from here to looking at Jesus. I don't have time for games. 
And as Pastor Chris was talking, I thought about my own life because for too long, we've got an entertainment-driven church culture where we're trying to one-up each other and this preacher doesn't like that preacher and this church doesn't like that church. And, and well, what are they doing on the internet and Instagram and how many followers and, oh, look at that. And I don't care anymore what you think about me. I don't care if you like me. It's time for somebody to preach the gospel. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. I'm tired of a watered-down gospel that winks at sin. God loves you. God loves everybody. Yeah, that's, that's a part of the story. But the other part is God loves you enough to tell you the truth. That's sin, and sin will get you sent to hell. And you need to stop sinning, and you need to give your life to Jesus, and you need to turn from your wicked ways. Oh, I'm going to preach it. If I'm by myself, I'm going to preach it. Jesus said in Matthew 4, 17, from that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. No gospel is complete without the gospel of repentance. You didn't buy a ticket to get in here. This isn't a concert. This isn't a show. If you came for a show, this, you're in the wrong place. This is a church, and church is for broken people who need to know that only Jesus, through his Holy Spirit, can change your life. But sin is a real thing, and hell is real. Everybody's not going to heaven, and you need to hear me say it. Everybody's not going to heaven. Some folk are going to go to hell, and you can only go to hell if you reject Jesus Christ. Oh, I'm going to keep preaching. And it's not just bad people going to hell. It's going to be some preachers in hell. It's going to be some preachers, some famous preachers, and elders and prophets in hell. How do I know? The Bible says they're going to look at Jesus and say, but we, we, we cast out demons in your name. We prophesied in your name. He's going to say, depart from me. I never knew you. You did all of that show, and we never had relationship. You did all that stuff, and you never came to see me. Oh, God, woe is me if I preach my whole life and end up in hell. You can go to church your whole life and end up in hell. Repent. Stop sinning. If that ain't your wife, don't sleep with her. Cut it off right now. If that ain't your husband, stop sleeping with him. If you single, stop having sex outside of marriage. You know what the Bible says. If you're gluttonous, stop eating everything. Stop all of that lying. Stop all of that gossiping. Stop it. Repent. Turn from your wicked ways. Call on Jesus. I'm tired of cheap grace. Running around like God is okay with everything. He's not okay with everything. If he was okay with everything, Jesus wouldn't have had to suffer and die. I wish I had more than you, DeMarcus. I don't know. I think I've offended some people because you want to live in your safe box like you can come to church and still live how you want. No, you cannot. If you are saved for real, then you have some real fruit. If you say you ought to show some sign. I'm looking for a dangerous church. Dangerous church tells the truth. Dangerous church is not popular. We got too many cool churches now. Everybody wants to be cool. Cool will get you hot later. Help me, Holy Ghost. Help me, Holy Ghost. 
that thing off. I don't know who that's for. That's a Delilah spirit. I know you love her, but you can love what's trying to kill you. He loved her, and all she wanted was his secret so she could kill him. You sitting there smiling, and they killing you. You have no clue. Ask me how I know. The enemy is counting on you not to know who you are so you can end up being around people and getting in relationship with people that are beneath your calling. Let them go. You're bigger than that. You're better than that. You're greater than that. You're past that now. Repent. Turn from your wicked way. Watered down gospel that dishonors the cross of Jesus. People are dying, going to an eternal hell. And we looking at our watches so we can watch a game that doesn't matter. Last one here, first one to the car. To do what? To go back to your broken life? Hot or cold, lukewarm, I spit you out. If you're going to get in church, then get all the way in. If you're not, then get all the way out. Because whether you out or lukewarm, they both get you sent to hell. So if you're going to do wrong, do it all the way. Don't worry yourself with church. Don't be guilty. Just be a good sinner. Or you can let it go and serve God with your whole heart. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Woo, there's some uncomfortable people in here. But I'm going to give them 20 seconds to give God an all-in praise. I'm going to give you 15 seconds. You can stand, you can sit, you can shout, you can stomp. But whatever you do, Repent. The Bible says we shall reign with him if we suffer with him. For I consider that the sufferings of this present age are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. Everybody wants victory. Nobody wants the suffering. Everybody wants the blessing. I can prophesy houses, y'all run all up and down this place. I prophesy cars, y'all run up and down this place. I prophesy healing from cancer, you'll run up and down. When I declare suffering, nobody claps. But it's the suffering that produces glory. Because here's the truth, everybody's not getting healed from cancer. Some of our loved ones gonna die in a car accident. Some folk gonna die of a heart attack and they won't get a Lazarus gift. They won't get resurrected. This body doesn't last forever, but eternity is forever. And there's something that's after we close our eyes. You going somewhere and it might as well be heaven. Tell somebody I'm all in. No, say it like you mean it. Scream it, shout it, yell it, stomp it, stand on the cushion. Tell somebody I'm all in. Ain't nobody gonna stand on the cushion. They scared. They don't know if they weight gonna hold. I double dog there. Yeah, Brent. Let's go, Nick. Let's go, Pastor Aventer. I'm all in, Legina. I'm all in. I need a couple people that'll stand on this thing. On Christ, the solid rock I stand. The ground, all of the ground is sinking sand. Oh, Christ, the solid rock I stand. Oh, oh, all of the ground is 
I will reign with him if I suffer with him. But you and I have a Western mindset, an American definition of suffer, which means physical pain without purpose. But the word suffering in the Greek, eh, can means to press, to press hard upon, narrow, straightened, contracted. So the word suffer means to be contracted or narrowed or cut down or conformed to the image of the sun. So the suffering is actually cutting off anything that doesn't look like Jesus. I wish I had some help in here. That's not a pain that you want God to let go of. You need to thank God for that pain. He's cutting off some stuff you don't need. He's constraining you, conforming you. He's pressing you. He's trying to get the anointing out of you. So he's squeezing you. We got too many grape juice Christians, but God's not trying to make grape juice. He's trying to make new wine. I wish I had some help in here. I wish I had about 10 deacons right here to encourage me. I wish I had a couple of people. I wish I had, I wish I had somebody who understands what I'm talking about. He's not trying to make Great juice. He's trying to make new, new wine. Tell somebody it's just a little bit of suffering. These light afflictions, which are but for a moment are producing a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Ah, get your weight up. Got too many lightweight Christians. First sign of an attack, you quit. I ain't going to church no more. God didn't answer my prayer. This ain't Santa Claus. You, he ain't a genie. You don't rub God's stomach and get three wishes. Suffer. Go through something. Get the keys so you can tell somebody else, he did it for me. He can do it for you. I wish I had somebody. He's pressing you. Constraint. I feel the Holy Ghost. I, I, hear, I prophesy this church will never be the same after this sermon. We will be the church that God sent us here for. Help me, Holy Ghost. Been fighting for over a year and a half. Oh, Lord, what you want me to be? What you want me to do? Do I need to be sweet? They, they feel it still hurt because the pastor left. And well, what am I supposed to do? They like me. Do they want something else? I, I don't know. And my wife got braids and we black. They was white. I don't know. It's the South. It has said all this stuff about me. Some of it's true. Most of it's a lie. Should I give up? Should I quit? Suffer. I didn't let none of it happen till you got here because I'm making you. I'm making I'm making I'm making you. It's all right. Cause I'm making stuff.
Will they receive me? Will they like me? I don't know. Why don't I play it safe? I could have stayed at the big church. Tanya, what happens if I, I close my eyes and open them and I'm looking at Jesus and I'm ready to get in? And he says, hold on. I ask you to follow me. If you're going to be a disciple, you must first deny yourself. Take up your cross and follow me. You didn't follow me. Well, Lord, it wasn't convenient to follow you. I was at the big church. I had it easy. I was at the biggest church in America. Yeah, but I didn't ask you to do that. I went there to teach you, to train you, Moses. I gave you the best schools, Moses. Then I sent you to the desert, Moses. And it looked like that was the last stop. But the second stop is for the final stop. Can I get in? No. You wanted the spotlight more than you wanted my light. Clout chasing. Running after every invitation. Running after every conference. My picture on all the flyers. God said, I'm going to let you have that for a second to show you it ain't real. Then I'm going to break you all the way down and show you that while you're running all over the world, you're about to lose your whole family. <laughs> and you want to know if that's me or not? No. I didn't call you to serve me and lose your wife and kids. I got to keep going, Brandon. I feel it. I'm going to get free. If I'm the only one that gets saved today, then I'm going to get saved. I'll put the mic down and be at the altar in 10 minutes. I could stay in the safe place. I didn't call you to stay safe. Oh, help me. Oh. I called you to live dangerous. Dangerous is leaving everything you know and going to a place I didn't, whew, I didn't know anybody, didn't have no family here, didn't know if they'd like me. I didn't build this. This don't look like me. But he told me to come. First responders go where there's a fire. First responders go to the place other people run from. Help me, Holy Ghost. Sometimes you're looking for your life to be easy and you think ease is God's favor. No, it's not. Ease is the devil's illusion. When you suffer, it gets your weight up. So that means whether I'm a base or a bound, my hands are lifted. If I got a million dollars or negative 150,000, whether I get paid on Friday or Tuesday, I still trust God. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. I got my hands lifted, not because of what I have, but because of who you are. And I trust you. Even though it's not always going in my favor, I got my hands lifted. Paul declared in 2 Corinthians 11 and 22, are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they seed of Abraham? So am I. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more in labors, more abundant, in stripes above measure, in prisons more frequently, in deaths often. From the Jews, five times I received 40 stripes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. Night and day I was in the deep. Uh, in journeys often, in perils of water, in perils of robber, in perils of my own countrymen, in perils of the Gentile, perils of the city, in perils in the wilderness. Peril means danger for the folk that don't know what that means. I was in danger from the non-believers. I was in danger from the folk in the church. I was in... I was in danger with robbers, 
in the city, in the wilderness, in the sea, with false brethren, in weariness and toil, in sleeplessness often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness. That's Paul. Wrote 70% of the New Testament. But you don't get that kind of anointing without suffering. Here's what I learned. Most people don't want to be a disciple. They just want to go to church. You're not going to be safe coming to this church anymore. If it's sin, I'm going to talk about it. Not talk about you. Catch that. Don't get out there and say he tried to talk. I don't even know your name. I haven't even said nothing you're going through. That's the Holy Spirit convicting you. What is dangerous church, Pastor John? A dangerous church goes after souls, even if it costs you your life. I had my own agenda. I could have been a famous preacher and been at the big church, or I could have went to the small town and served God. So I had opportunity, and then I had obedience. One will make you famous with men, other will get you favor with God. I don't want anybody on this team that wants fame with men over favor with God. If you got your agenda over God's agenda, then you be blessed. But in here, we going after souls. We running after broken people. I don't, and I want you to run after broken people. They already talking about you. Give them something to talk about. Why you smell like weed? Because I was hanging with them while they were smoking and I was talking about Jesus. And I wasn't judging them because I used to puff puff pass too. Is there anybody in here that'll keep it real? Yeah, I heard you was at the bar. Yep, I used to get turned up, had my own bottle of Patron. Now I'm high off something else, but I know what it's like to be at a bar and be hopeless. So I sit next to them. I got water in my glass. They got something in theirs, but there is a water that won't run dry. I wish I had some help in here. Yeah, I saw you and your homegirls at the strip club. Yeah, because I used to strip. Now I talk to the girls while they leaving to let them know there's something more than making it rain. There's another rain coming, the latter rain, the rain of the Holy Ghost. Is there anybody in here that hears what I'm talking about? We don't judge anybody who walks through them doors. I don't care who you are. I don't care who you love. I don't care who you think you are, what you will be. You are a soul, and you are welcome in this church. We let the Holy Ghost work out everything else. I'm tired of the church reacting. Did you hear what I said, James? Church always reacting. Something happened. Ooh, look at that. Ooh, what we going to do? First responders show up at the, they don't even know how bad it is. They just go. It's time for the church to just go. Did you hear what I said? Let's go. I want a shirt that says, let's go. Okay. I, I want to run past the yellow tape. I want to touch the things that the world doesn't want to touch. I want to touch the people that other churches don't want to touch. You can talk, you talking about us anyway. So you might as well, we might as well give you more. We must respond first. We must love first. We must forgive first. We must serve first. Why? Because the unrepentant heart responds to love and mercy. It was with loving kindness that I drew you. Religion will try to shame you into coming to an altar. Shame on you. You know you need to be shame. It's nowhere in the Bible, you lying devil. I don't receive it. And none of them religious demons. I don't care what a preacher says. If it don't look like Jesus, I don't receive it. If it doesn't sound like Jesus, I don't receive it. On the same side, I'm not going to be real super liberal with my theology and be like, God is cool with everything. No, he's not. Sin is sin. 
You better confess your sins or end up in hell. Hell is real. The devil is real, and he wants to trick you into thinking that you can manage your sin. You can't manage your sin. You got to get delivered. And I want Jesus to come in through the Holy Ghost, and I don't want you to just get the habit. I want you to dig up the root so it doesn't grow back anymore. Is there anybody that says, God, get it at the root? We are to love people into the kingdom. For it was with loving kindness that I've drawn you. So if you're here or you're listening, we're going to be a dangerous church. Charles, 343 firefighters ran into a tower. Many of them climbing all the way up to the 80th floor trying to save people. They never made it out. They had wives or husbands and children. Right now, family still in counseling because they had enough courage to run into a burning building to fight for people they don't know. Jesus is the ultimate first responder. Running into the burning building of our soul that we set on fire with our sin. And he came in with the extinguisher of mercy, with the oxygen of grace. <gasps> and the helmet of salvation walking us down through peril and trial and demonic activity pushing us out of the way of certain death running back into the building to be crucified in our place not only was he the ultimate first responder he responded before the first bell went off because the bible says while we were yet sinners christ died for the ungodly which means before the building was even on fire before you had ever done the first sin he had already determined to die for you what kind of first responder is there in the building before you do the first wrong thing and say it's paid for. You're like, what are you talking about? Then all hell breaks loose and you realize he was there before it started because he had a plan for you after it's over. <laughs> Tired of searching for acceptance and approval. I don't work for you. I work for God. If everybody leaves and God stays, I'm all right. But if everybody comes and God leaves, I'm, I have nothing. There's a lot of popular folk with no oil. You can draw a crowd and have no oil, but Relentless is going to be a dangerous church. When the devil sees us coming, he's going to tell his demons, pack up and leave because we're not going to win. I've tried everything and they keep coming. They keep going. They do weird stuff. They go to places other church folk won't go. I've said I'm looking for a dangerous church. Some folk ain't going to come back. You be blessed. You go over there where they preach everything you want to hear. Go where they won't offend you. And then end up in hell because you wanted somebody to like you in your sin. If I don't preach the gospel, I need to throw the mic away. I haven't said this one before, but this takes me back to my days at Bethel Baptist Church. The doors of the church are open. As the elders and leaders and pastors get in place, is there one today that needs to repent and call on Jesus? Everybody standing, nobody leaving, everyone standing. If you've never given your life to Jesus, he responded to you first. Meet me at the altar. Is there one? If you know that you're saved, but you know you want to be a part of a dangerous church, get your stuff and get all in. Here's the first one. First responder.
There are others, and we're going to clap till they come. It's a few of y'all in that balcony. Get your stuff and come. I'm not playing with y'all. Come on. You know the Lord is calling you to be a member of Relentless Church.